overboard. Overboard in our giving. Overboard tonight. And Father, we're going to give your name the praise. And the glory shall be thine in Jesus' name. The people of the Lord said, thank God. Amen. 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 Say amen, said I got. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. God is a God with benefits. How many of you know he's a healer? How many of you know he's a deliverer? I've been shouting and praising God ever since I came to this church. Praise God. My mother brought me to this church when I was five years old. God saved me when I was 13. And I'm 65 now. Well, just a few more days, I'll be 65. Ain't no need to be stopping. And I'm praising God. I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep on blessing him. women that we have tonight. Amen. And to jurisdiction one, two, three. Amen. And four. Isn't the Lord good? The Lord has brought us all together under the same roof. Amen. We serve an awesome God, saints. We serve a magnificent God. As a matter of fact, he's an exuberant God. Amen. As a matter of fact, I really don't have words to describe how good our God is. Let me just welcome you tonight to the Greater New Bible Way Church. Amen, amen, and to the second jurisdiction, amen, of the churches of God in Christ in Arkansas. Men perfecting men. Great things happen when men get together. Amen, and you know what? I realize, brothers, we still can't do it without the women of the church. Amen. Can I be honest with you tonight? Amen. We welcome you all tonight. Amen. Let's just enjoy Jesus. Is that all right? Amen. Let's put our hands together. Let's lift our voices. Amen. Let's let heaven know that we come to give God the glory. Anybody come to magnify God? Anybody come to praise God? Lord. 
We're not here because we were driving so safe tonight. But we're here because God made it possible. Yeah. I think we ought to give him a thanks for yeah. This opportunity. To, we've gathered for purpose. Yeah. Not to look at each other. Yeah. Not to look at this beautiful church. Yeah. But we've gathered to give God praise. Oh, yeah. I, I know we've got talented in Arkansas. I, I know we have resource. I, I, I know we have great saints. So we're excited about the, the National Men's Protected Men's Conference coming our way. Amen. And I want to tell you, saints all over the world is preparing to come to Arkansas. Yes, and what we really want to do, Arkansas, we want to be here and welcome them. Amen. Anytime someone come from the cross the sea, we ought to be here for them to see us. Right. Amen. 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 I pray that we will be able to take this rally in the spirit of this experience that we're having tonight. Yes. And we'll be able to let it carry over. Carry over into April and May yeah. so that everybody would know this is where it all started yeah. Oh, yeah. right here in Arkansas Amen. come on put your hands together
thank you, citizens. Thank you, Lord. Well, brothers and sisters, I am happy to present to you someone who will give our inspirational address on tonight. Brother Oliver. God bless you. My scripture tonight will be coming from Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14, verses 7 through 9. Job 14, verses 7 through 9. I'm going to say a really short prayer. Father God, help me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I give honor to God tonight and to whom honor is due. I only have 10, 15 minutes is what I was told, so I just want a short prayer. All I need is help. Amen. From Job 14, 7 through 9, for there is hope of a tree. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. My thought tonight from this Bible text is, I smell water. I smell water. In this Bible text, the Word of God mentions a tree, and we all know the story of Job, very familiar scripture, and we all know about Job. And in the beginning of the story of Job, I would say that Job was the tree. He was the tree. He was on top of the world. He had all that a man could ever ask or want. He was in perfect standing with God. He had a wonderful wife and loving children who honored him. He owned enormous herds of livestock. His relationship with God was so strong that daily he communed with God in personal prayer. Yes, I would say Job was living large. He was the picture of success for his day. He was the tree. A sweet Roll in life. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been the tree? <clears throat> a sweet roll in life where everything seemed to be going just perfect. Everything is automatically falling into place and everything in the family is right. Everything on the job is right. The electric bill, y'all know how it is, is paid. The gas bill is paid. House note is taken care of, plenty of money to go around to do everything that needs to be done and then some. No doubt the wife is going through and around the house calling you honey and giving you winks. And the kids are minding and just seem like perfect little angels. Unless I forget, there is plenty of food. Plenty of food in the house, in the refrigerator, plenty of Sprite and Coke. The car is new and the truck is hot and the boat is ready to be put in the lake. You never felt better in your life health-wise. Everything is just on top of the world. You are a living law. You are the tree. Job maybe never dreamed that one fateful morning in his life that everything would change. He got up just like every other morning, no doubt, ate his breakfast and sent his children out for the day and went to prayer before God like he had the day before. There was no big ominous cloud in the sky. There was no eerie feeling of impending tragedy. It felt just like another tree day in the life of Job. And then there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking when a messenger came to tell Job that one of the rival nations of Israel, or to Israel, the Sabaeans, struck down his servants and stole Job's oxen and donkey. Yeah. And while this messenger was speaking to Job, another servant came, no doubt, running out of breath to tell Job that had burned up his sheep and his servants and consumed them and he alone escaped to 
tell the story. And as if that was not enough, while he was yet speaking, there came also another serpent to tell Job that the Chaldeans made out three bands and raided the habitat of the camels, stealing the camels and killing the servant. Lord help us. But the most crushing blow of all followed immediately while this man was speaking. Another one came to inform Job that while his sons and his daughters were feasting in his oldest son's house, a great wind, perhaps a tornado, struck the house, destroying it utterly and killing all of Job's ten children. Satan allowed these four messengers to remain alive so that Job would receive the news rapidly, blow upon blow. No doubt Satan designed these things with the, with the object of totally devastating Job so that he would turn his back on Job. But Job's like the tree was cut down. Job was like the stump. And in this Bible text tonight, the word of God inserts a very important two-letter word. It says if. If in regard to the tree. It said if the tree be cut down. Now notice something here very important because it applies most of, uh, I believe most of us that's here tonight, that the hope is only inserted uh, on the condition that the tree is cut down. So like Joe, many of us tonight have experienced mountaintop experiences in life. But also like him, many of us have had the same mountain that we once stood upon turn upon us only to find ourselves not only at the foot of the mountain, but desperately trying to dig out from under the rock and the rubble that came down with us and on top of us from that mountain. Friends, you may look fine. You may not need hope tonight. I know you dressed up from the top floor up. But when life brings with it saws and windstorms and cut you down, Hope comes upon the tree. So that like the stump, you can expect the water and the nutrients from the roots to be the comeback from your setback. We find ourselves sometimes in life at a point where all we have is hope. I wish I had some help up in here. But guess what? I also know that all we need is hope. Hallelujah. One winter, several years ago, a man ended up cutting firewood for a living. He went up on the mountain and got permission from a man uh, to cut wood on his place. And he cut that most of the winter. He noticed something about the tree stumps. During that winter, they looked dead. Soon after being cut, the top of the stump would season over and turn a blackish brown color. They appeared to be dead, but they were not. He found something out really quickly. The tree is more easily pushed over or cut than the stump. The tree may not survive the storm, but I came to tell you tonight that the stump will survive. The stump will season and live. The cut tree top will rot and die. Take a look back at our friend Job. Job was cut down. Yeah, he had it all and he lost it all. He lost it all through no fault of his own. But he finds himself now not a tree, but a stone. Everything went wrong that could go wrong. He lost his children, his health, his wealth. Even lost the confidence of his wife. His whole life had been reduced in just a short time to the level of a stump. His wife asked him to just curse God and die. And, and why not? Well, the word of God points out that Job was a man of God. One more thing about a tree is its hope is in the roots. Every year, but the roots they keep getting deeper and deeper. The tree's foundation is in the roots, and that's why Job did not curse God. His roots were in the Lord. So tonight, my friends, you may find yourself cut down, and you may wonder, will I ever grow back? You may wonder, will I have a comeback? 
from this setback. Uh, it is at this time when the hope of the tree kicks in. See that grew one day near Jerusalem. A tree. A tree that would be cut and sawed into two beams. And they would be passionate into a cross. And a man named Jesus would be nailed and crucified to that tree. But this was not just any man. This was the son of God. He was the perfect lamb. The savior of the world. So the hope of the country tonight is Jesus Christ. And if our roots are in Show 
if you can, praise the Lord. Stand up if you want to shout if you want, whatever you want to do, do it. Just do it in the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. Amen. We praise God for the blessings of the Lord. I'm happy with Jesus alone. Thank God, amen, for the, our MC tonight, Bishop Rudolph. God bless you. Amen. God bless Bishop Withers, First Jurisdiction. Amen. God bless Bishop Williams, J.E. Williams. Amen. Arkansas Fourth. Amen. Thank God for all of our administrative assistants, our superintendents and pastors from all of Arkansas and you for being here on tonight. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for this, your vestige of believers who have come to this house of worship. And thank you for the opportunity to bless, to honor you, and to lift your name. It is our prayer tonight that you would meet us even the more in this place. That whatever the needs are in the room, you would meet them according to your riches and glory. And so God, we We'll do all we can to provoke your presence so that your glory will come glory. into the room. And someone just lift a hand and just say, Lord, have your way. By your spirit and your power, move in the midst of this yeah. people. We ask you now. Someone is in need of healing in their body. Thank you for healing. Someone is in need of a financial deliverance. Thank you for financial breakthrough. There's a pastor here that needs a shifting in their church. Thank you for the shift. There's a husband and a wife that needs you to mend their hearts. Thank you for the mending. There are parents here that need you to be a blessing in the lives of their children. Thank you for touching. In the name of Jesus. We bind the enemy and his every expectation now. The blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we plead your blood in this place now. In the name of Jesus. Give us a word, O oh God, that we can carry not only in this moment, but as we leave this place that will reverberate throughout our lives. Thank you for precision and articulation to say only what you want said. And on our hearts and make them permeable to receive and 
Walk in the application of this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Every believing heart says, thank God. Amen. 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 I can't hug everybody, but if you would, just throw your arms around one, at least one person, and tell them I'm glad to be worshiping with you tonight. God for being here and certainly we give honor and due deference to our host bishop, Bishop Frank Anderson, to my bishop, Bishop Jewel Withers, to Bishop Junius Williams, to my friend and brother, Bishop Robert Rudolph, to all of these wonderful pastors, our host pastor. Uh, we thank you for opening up your doors and making this possible for these jurisdictions Amen. to come together. All of these wonderful leaders, administrative assistants, superintendents, pastors, many of whom are dear friends who have given me opportunity over the years to stand behind their sacred desks. God bless each of you who could have been standing where I am today, and I certainly honor each of you. My father is here, Superintendent Alvin Coleman Sr. Uh, rode down with me. I love you, Dad. To all of the supervisors and only ladies, to my lovely wife uh, of 24 years, uh, missionary Kenita Arlene and Alan Cohen. Would you stand up to God bless you. My sons are with me tonight. Two of my sons. Uh, one is on the organ. The other is in the choir stand. And so I love you guys. Thank you to the musicians, Elder Jones. Uh, thank you, Elder uh, Wade. And to all of that, we're here to help with the music tonight. Certainly, we enjoyed our inspirational address. If I had one bone to pick, it would be that I have to come behind that. Uh, it was absolutely fabulous. I do not have the luxury of just getting up and preaching without making recognition because I would not be here if it were not for these bishops who gave me the opportunity. And so I certainly want to thank God and appreciate their confidence uh, to allow me this moment to share uh, with this body of Christ. And certainly, uh, to all of you who are here, God bless you. We love you and thank God for you. Uh, from our church, Elder uh, Alfred Smith and his wife Brenda are here. Would you wave your hand? Uh, thank God for them being with us tonight. And granddaughter, we're glad to see you uh, being with us. And uh, we would have loved to have brought more people, but we have been traveling quite a bit lately. Uh, this past Sunday, we were in Pine Bluff and we took our buses down. So we took three vans. We took about six or seven cars. And uh, most of you, especially pastors, you understand you can't wear your people out all the time. And so I had to use a little wisdom and not press them for tonight. Um, but uh, we're here, and I believe that the Lord is going to do something great in this place. Uh, certainly, we have enjoyed everything that has taken place up until this point. And we're just going to share the word. I don't feel like I have to preach to prove I can preach tonight. Uh, thank you for those few amens I got. Thank you. I just don't feel like I should have to prove anything and, and try to hurt myself to impress uh, people that don't really like me anyway. All right, all right. <laughs> but uh, for those of you who are my friends and who love yes. the word of God, I think we can find something in the word and talk about it. Thank God for my brothers, Pastor Anthony Coleman and uh, Pastor Aaron Withers, and certainly to our uh, local, uh, local men's chairman, Pastor Jones, God bless you, and uh, we thank God for you. All right, let's go to the word of the Lord tonight. The Gospel of John, chapter 8. I trust that I've called all the names that I need to call so that I will not lose an opportunity that may come for me in the future. I've learned how to survive in this church. Uh, John, chapter 8, verse 31, verse 32. I won't do a lot of Greek and Hebrew and all of that tonight. Uh, we'll just deal with these two scriptures. Yeah. When you have it, say amen. amen. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Yeah. And ye shall know the truth. Yeah. And the truth I'll make you free. Yes, sir. I really want to concentrate on that first of the chosen verses. If you 
continue in my word. If you yeah. if yeah. you continue, if you yeah. if you continue. If you continue. I want to talk for just a few minutes uh, from the thoughts from those who need one. Uh, the benefit of continuance. Come on, say that with me. The benefit of continuance. It would make me feel comfortable if I can act like I do at home. And anytime at home we prepare to receive the word of the Lord, um, even if you were getting ready to eat naturally, you would, uh, as I have been taught, thank God for the food you're about to receive. So I'd be comfortable if we could just take a moment and clap our hands to the hell of it. Thank God for the word of God. As Jesus often uh, taught and ministered to those who followed him, he used various parables and stories to teach godly principles. For the story of the talents and the parable of the sower are among my favorite examples of his great teachings. But in this particular passage, Jesus is speaking to the Jews and Pharisees many of whom often questioned his teachings and challenged him for their own personal agendas. It was the Pharisees who were so stuck in tradition that they could not make room for the realization that Jesus was indeed the Messiah who was come to fulfill prophecy as spoken by the great prophets of old. And if you continue through this entire passage, you'll find that at the end of the chapter, <laughs> There were a very few people who listened or that the very few people or the very people who listened and disagreed with his teaching actually took up stones. Took up stones and they were prepared to stone him to death. But the 30th verse in the midst of this teaching, it says something interesting because it declares many believed on him. So as they listened, many of them believed. And so because those believed, he continued to teach those who were being converted. And he said to them while teaching, if you would continue in my word. Yes, sir. Now the word continue is a word which means to persist, to carry on, to keep going. Yes. means to maintain, it means to sustain. Yes. And it's vital that as men and women of God, we persist, carry on, and maintain our fellowship with the word of God. Yes. As a matter of fact, he says, continue in my word. Right. Right. Which means that we should operate in accordance, agreement, and harmony with the word of God. He tells these believers who are, picture it now, he tells these believers who are surrounded by non-believers, who are surrounded by haters, to continue in my word. In other words, don't allow your surroundings and your environment to push you out of my will. And herein lies the ultimate situation. Each of us tonight are surrounded by circumstances that are designed to pull us out of God's will for our own lives. Amen. We're often bombarded with so many issues and problematic situations. If we aren't careful, they can cause us to abort our dreams and our aspirations. Amen. When we look back over even this past year and all of the turmoil <laughs> and the pain, the disappointment, the loss, the destruction, the confusion, and the stress that we had to overcome, we can see several opportunities that we could have given up. Yes. Matter of fact, some of us really wanted to give up. Yes. Some of us started drafting our resignation letter. Yes. We were just that close. Yes. We have seen several opportunities where we could have walked away from what we know was a God-given assignment. Yes. There have been things that have happened to us. Uh, anybody who's been following our ministry, <coughs> We had more deaths at our local church in 2018 in the last three or four months. I had so many people uh, who were leaving that somebody asked, do y'all have anybody left at the church? They were just, uh, just 
that's the hand of God doing what he does and, and the timing. Are y'all hearing so many dealing with, with cancer? One of our church mothers just uh, that Sunday morning was doing just well. No issues whatsoever. Beautiful. Walking around hugging everybody. And less than 24 hours later, uh, going on to be with the Lord. We, we had to deal with a lot. And when we, we sit here this afternoon, all of us are not a good Sunday morning dress, looking real good, sounding real good, praising God, and enjoying one another in fellowship and in worship. Uh, can we be real through here uh, that in spite of all we've been through, right. we're just grateful that we're still here. I'm just, I'm just grateful that I'm still here. Just, 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 I'm sorry, Sister Oliver. Just touch and tell your neighbor I'm still here. I'm still here. In, in spite of the pain, in spite of the frustration, in spite of the disappointments, in spite of the hurt, in spite of the loss, in spite of the illness, in spite of the, the heartache, in spite of the damage, in spite of the circumstance, I'm still here. Watch this. And, and it's not by my own works, but it's by the grace of God. I was sitting there, I started dancing earlier while the praise was going up, because while I was sitting there, I looked up in the back, and y'all see those young people on that on that balcony back there, when, when the music, you saw them too, when the music was going, those young people were back there dancing. <laughs> and I was sitting there, you know, trying to act all cool and all of that, because, you know, I got to preach, and I don't want to start sweating before I have to, and when you're my size, you try not to sweat till you have to, come on. <laughs> But uh, I was sitting there and something hit me. I, I was reminded, and everybody that was in the car with me on the way here, I, I just sat there and thought about how God spared. I told him how God spared my life just getting here. While we were coming, there was a, 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 a car on the side of the road that was being picked up by a, a, a wrecker. And uh, all the traffic was slowing down. There was a policeman with his lights on. And so y'all know how it is when you see the police, everybody start trying to slow down. And, and, and the ground is wet. And while the crown is wet, everybody start hitting their brakes. Well, I slowed down like everybody else. I looked up in my rear view mirror and I saw a car veer off the road. They were coming fast. They didn't know what was going on. And they ran over on the side, in the, in the side. Y'all know what I'm talking about over there. And they ran in the side and then the truck that was right behind us. Oh, help me hold it go. The truck that was behind us, we looked up and that truck had to shift to miss us. So uh, the truck that was behind me was now beside me. Y'all missing me. And then watch this, the same car that was on the other side of the road, now the truck is between me and the car. And nobody got hit, nobody got hurt. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So I couldn't help but give God praise because when the enemy tried to take me out, I thank God that I'm still, I'm still here. Could have lost my life, but I'm still here. Could have lost my mind, but I'm still here. Could have given up and walked away from God, but I'm still here. Wanted to throw in the towel, y'all ain't helping me, but I'm still here. Could have given up on my ministry, but I'm still here. The devil tried to, this, wait a minute, the devil succeeded in bringing discouragement into my mind. Uh, see, I know y'all ain't going to be real right there, but I'm still I'm still here. Try to break me, but I'm still here. Try to unnerve me, but I'm still here. Would you high five that neighbor and tell him I'm still, I'm still here. Still here. As long as I'm still here, I still got another opportunity to do what a God is assigned for my life. So, so I thank him that I'm still here. Now, now, since I'm still here, Richard, and out of all I've been through, let's just be real. I've got some questions. I've got some questions. Question number one Will I have to continue to endure the same pain that I just had to deal with in my last season? Will I have to continue to deal with the frustration that plagued my ministry, my body, my children, my marriage? Will, will I see the fruition of my prayers and my faithfulness? In lieu of these questions, I believe I'm not the only one that has them tonight. 
the Lord would have me encourage you that regardless of what follows, regardless of what happens next, regardless of what comes across your path, your one word to hold on tonight is the word continue. Come on, just say it with me. Continue. You got to keep going. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep believing. You have to keep trusting that God is going to work things out in your favor. So Jesus in the text, you may have missed it the first time you read it. That's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. In the text, it gives us three benefits of continuance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The first of those is discipleship. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples. Did y'all read it? Yes, sir. Then are ye my disciples indeed. Yes. That word disciple is a word that simply means pupil or learner. Yes. But he follows up the word disciple with the word indeed. Which means true or truly. If Jesus gives emphasis on being true disciples, he does so with the implication that there must be some false disciples. You see, only those who continue in the word of God are the true pupils of Christ. You see, discipleship carries a unique relationship with God, for as God's pupils, we reap the benefit of God's intimate teaching and His divine favor. It is through discipleship that we can retrieve the intricacies of God's divine nature and character. It is through discipleship that God trains the believer for the fulfillment of their kingdom agenda. Yes. It is in the intimate setting of discipleship that God unveils himself to us for the purpose of what is it? divine exposure, which leads to our personal development and growth. You see, if y'all remember a roll of film, y'all know we got all these, but, but a roll of film which has been exposed must then be developed in order to reveal the picture that was captured. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so it's through discipleship that God gives us the exposure of him. Yeah. Right. Mm. Right. In order that we can be developed into the image that reflects his nature and his character. You see, John, John explains this unique nature of relationship in the first of his three epistles in chapter 3, where he writes, Beloved, now are we the son, thank you, I got some help, the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall, don't miss this, we shall see him as he is. So the disciples, as sons of God, are in relationship with him and his word. I don't have time to teach the whole lesson, but in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was with God. Come on. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So my relationship with the word uh, is my relationship with Jesus Christ. Y'all got it. Uh, uh, he says, watch this. When you have a relationship with my word, you will have the advantage and the ability to see me as I am. Yes. That's the reason for the issues you face. All right. Okay. Let me give it to you like this. You would have never known God as a healer if it weren't for the sickness. You would never have known him as a deliverer if it weren't for the situation where you needed deliverance. You would, have known, you would never have known him as a way maker if you didn't have a way you needed made. And so every issue that I go through is exposure Okay, let me give it to you like this. It's an opportunity for God to show me who he is. Okay, Andre Crouch said it like this. If I never had a father, 
know. I feel like I'm going to get some help somewhere. I would know that God could solve them or what faith in his word would do. But then he penned the words, but through it all. I'm talking about when you got a relationship. He said, I've learned. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've, I've learned to depend upon his word. Through it all, watch this. Through every trial, every test, every disappointment, every struggle, every pain, every issue, every lie, every rumor, through it all, watch this, I've been disciplined. That's going to wake up in y'all lives. Through it all, I've been disciplined. Some of y'all, your, your prayer life is strong because of what you've been through. So your pain disciplined you. Y'all making me work hard. Uh, the sickness disciplined you. The frustration disciplined you. Uh, the marital issues disciplined you. Even your children with their crazy act and self. I know you love them, but they discipline you. Everything I'm going through, God's discipling me. Oh, God. Uh, I'm sorry, Sister Oliver. Just touch another neighbor and tell them I'm a work in progress. I'm... Work, work in progress. God is discipling me. He's teaching me some things now. Second benefit, I gotta go. Second benefit is the knowledge of truth. Y'all still with me? Jesus says, if you continue my word, he says, you shall know the truth. To know is to have, talk to me somebody, first-hand information. It infers the establishment and maintenance of a relationship with the truth. How can you know something or someone you have not experienced or been exposed to? We must recall that Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to God but by me. If Jesus, therefore, is the truth, then he is who we must establish our relationship with in order to gain knowledge as to our assignment in his kingdom. It is this knowledge of truth that exposes the believer to the will and the heart of God. And not only do we gain access to the truth of who God is, but in turn, we're revealed who we are in him. We gain access to the truth of God's promises in his word. For uh, we are, as Peter says in the first epistle, chapter 2, verse 9, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people that we should show for the praises of him who brought us up out. Come on, somebody. Of darkness into this marvelous light. For we are the righteousness of God. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are the lender and not the borrower. We are blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we go in. We're blessed when we come out. We are the rock upon which God shall build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. We know who we are because we know who and you shall know the truth. See, the devil, he specializes in telling you what's right. It's right. It's, it's right. I've got cancer in my body. It's right. I've got a heart condition. It's right. I got a bad prognosis, bad diagnosis. It's right. Yes. But when you got a relationship with the truth, yes. while the devil can tell you what's right, you tell him what's truth. Yes. Yeah, you're right. But the truth is, he was wrong. I thought some good preachers. For my transgression, he was bruised. For my iniquity, the chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, it's true. It's true. Yes, sir. I know the difference between what's right and what's true. Yes, sir. You're right. I don't have enough money to pay my bills. Come on, preacher. It's right. The stack of my bills are higher than my currency. Uh huh. But the truth is, but my God shall supply all my needs according to his 
His riches in glory. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm glad I know the truth. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad I know the truth. This is why Paul declares that I might. Thank you. Y'all helping me now. That I may know him in the power. Talk to me, somebody. Of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. You see, there's an exposure to God's glory you would never have if it were not for your suffering. Yeah, your, your suffering directly correlates to your past COVID. It's, 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 it's unwise to tell me that and not give me a scripture to back it up. It's irresponsible. Well, the Bible says, for... I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are, are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. So it's my suffering that leads me into God's glory. Okay, y'all y'all missing me. I'll say it again. It's my sufferings that lead me into God's glory. You still missing me? I'll give you one more time. It's my suffering, my pain, my crime, my issue that leads me into God's glory. So I'm going to stop complaining about the suffering and thank God for what is leading me into. Where love flows because God is in control. A church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday.